Now here, I've taken the adjuster completely off. This is welds to one of the uh, uh, standoffs, welded to the pot. And I ground the end of the uh, bolt so that it would move freely. These uh, cast iron plugs have uh, a hole in them, you know, from the casting which it's made to save on metal. And I just simply notched the end of it. This doesn't have to be precise. And here is the plate. I put a little notch there to hold it in there. So you see, it sits here and it works back and forth. So it doesn't have to be all that precise. It's just holding it at whatever you set the, uh, the size of. Also, on the main driving cam, you see how I welded a uh, 3 8 inch rod. So this fits and can easily work uh, inside that space. I just wanted to uh, kind of review uh, the whole concept from the initial, uh, initial storyboard. Uh, when you design these things, you start out with a basic idea, and sometimes you come up with changes along the way. We didn't do too many on this. Uh, I decided to add uh, a piece of uh, one and a quarter iron pipe to the other side of the fixed jaw, just to kind of give it more hopper effect and, and seem to work better. Uh, the spring, we put it down here. We welded the little nut on the end and put it below the adjuster bolt plate. Uh, now, as far as ideas on possibly improving this, uh, I was limited on what I could find. I go to a place called Metal Supermarket. And they basically just have cutoffs from jobs they've done, so you never know what you're going to get any day you walk in. And I could only find eight inch, uh, half inch steel for to make two eight inch jobs. Ideally, because you're dealing with leverage here, all the prep pushes up here. The longer the jaws are, will give you more leverage. And it really won't cost that much in material, because you know, you've got all your bolts and your spacers and all that. This being a little bit wider and a little bit longer and a half inch jaws being a little longer won't really be all that, that, that costly. So I would recommend maybe making them 12 inches long, change all of this to fit, but you know, just stay somewhere within this framework. Uh, another thing involves the pulley. Uh, I realized all along that I needed to have a certain amount of flywheel effect. In other words, I wanted to have as much torque as I could. So if you've got, when you start this up, you're obviously going to start it up with it empty. So you get this thing moving, and if you drop, drop Rocky, and it helps crush it, just the fact that it's in motion. Uh, but this is the biggest one I could find, and uh, I would prefer it up to like a 14th. That would have given me more reduction on my motor. Uh, but this is like 11 and a half, and uh, but I, I intentionally got cast iron to give it a little foot. So one thing I may want to do is add a flywheel on the other side of this bearing, or even extend the shaft and have a, the pulley and a flywheel. Uh, that would help uh, quite a bit as well. Now there's another thing that you might consider is moving up to the next pipe size. Now, this is galvanized pipe. You'll be using this black pipe, but it's the same size. They don't quite fit. You see the threaded portion does fit, so you'll have to take some of the metal off. That's one reason I didn't use it. And grind it. Uh, you can set it up on a, uh, a drill press. Uh, you could even take a wood lathe and put a piece of wood in there and spin it that way and sand it down. But you'll have to get it where the two fit together. You may want to run a cylinder hone inside the outer piece. But use this, using this would give you more options on throw. Also, you could take this piece, which is the inch and a quarter, and you could fix it in there. And that would mean that you had two wearable surfaces. In other words, you had the pipe, you had the pipe that can be replaced on the uh, main shaft, and then you would also have a replaceable pipe uh, inside the welded portion. Uh, being this pipe's fairly inexpensive in small pieces, uh, you can make this run for quite a, quite a long time. Uh, then the only other thing uh, is you may decide to increase the width and the overall size. Uh, if you do that, 
on the pulley in the belt. You may, you'll need a bigger motor, of course, too. Uh, you may exceed the amount of torque a belt can take. Now, I have an air compressor. Uh, it's a big 100-gallon uh, tank, you just saw around, uh, that can pretty much run a body shot. And it uses a double pulley and a double pulley on the motor and uses two standard belts. And I've never had any problem uh, with braking belts or anything. So you might want to double up your, make your shaft longer and double up your pulleys if you're going to use, need to make something bigger that requires a lot more torque. And that would be pretty simple to do. Uh, just wanted to mention that to you, that you can only handle so much with a pulley and a belt. And I can't think of much much else uh, except for that, it's pretty much worked out as planned. Uh, okay guys, this is the mount that I prefer to use. It's uh, designed for putting a vise onto uh, a hitch receiver. And it's pretty simple. You've got the motor for the way to plug it here. It sits up here. Yeah.